And now we move on to this week's flashpoints with national security analyst Juan Zarati. And Juan, let's start with where we started the week, uh, but this story won't go away, and it's it's fascinating. The WikiLeaks. Um, where are we now on the story? What have we learned now that all of us have gotten a chance to look through these 75,000 reports? Yeah. Certainly, the flood of secret documents has fueled opposition. Uh, for those who are opposing the Afghan war, uh, has given them grist, has given them meat and, and reports to use to, to fight uh, President Obama's strategy, for example. You've seen that in Congress with, with some of the debates happening on funding. Uh, but I, I think what's important, though, you've seen a new debate emerge about the damage assessment. Uh, was this really a wise thing for WikiLeaks to do? Was it uh, something that uh, ultimately is not only go going to hurt the troops, but hurt those who have uh, been cooperating with the United States? You saw Secretary of Defense Gates yesterday blasting uh, WikiLeaks, uh, as well as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, saying these people may have blood on their right. hands, which I think uh, is not only a dramatic statement from the government, but probably a real one, because in those documents you have, now that we've had a chance to go through them, a real sense that sources, methods, even some names of those who've been helping the United States uh, have been revealed. And that's problematic. Right, because what we're talking about here is um, in terms of those sources that have been helping the United States, I mean, um, they may even not be helping today, but this is not a culture when you're dealing with the ta Taliban that forgets. I mean, that th this is basically a list of people they could go after for helping the, the uh, coalition That's forces. exactly right. And Taliban spokesman has already said, if people are U.S. spies, we know how to deal with them. And we know, we know that al-Qaeda, the Taliban, read the New York Times, they read through documents online. Uh, retribution is very quick. They behead people quickly, hang them for display, put night letters out to scare and intimidate folks. So th the reality was, and I said this early, early in the week, people would, will die as a result of this, either, either because they're suspected or otherwise. Uh, the Taliban will reach out. And this comes at a critical time when we're trying to build trust, trust with Afghan allies, trust with the Pakistanis. Uh, and so I think there's a real legitimate debate here as to whether or not what was done was really damaging to our national security. And just very quickly, because I know we've got other ones, but trust, because if you are in a position to potentially help the Americans, you now have to worry that your name is going to be broadcasted all over the world, Ab potentially. Absolutely right. There's, there are two elements of trust. One is, can the Americans keep secrets? Can I cooperate with the, the soldier who's coming to me for help, for information? Secondly, are the Americans going to be gone come September 2011? President Obama has talked about that as the beginning of a withdrawal of troops. What does that mean? For an Afghan villager or a Pakistani villager, uh, that, that strikes as somewhat of a tenuous relationship. All right, let's move now to North Africa. What's happening there? Well, al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, the al-Qaeda branch in North Africa, uh, killed a French hostage. Uh, and the French uh, have now declared war on al-Qaeda. Literally, that's what the French prime minister has said. Uh, President Sarkozy went out and made a, a public address to the French public after the death of the hostage. Uh, the French are taking this very seriously. They helped the Mauritanians raid uh, an al-Qaeda uh, site in Mali. Uh, they have vowed to help the countries in the region, Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Algeria, to fight against al-Qaeda. Uh, and you've seen Ayman al-Zawahiri, who once said that he wanted this branch of al-Qaeda to be the bone in the throat of the French, uh, come out and start to criticize the French for things like the uh, banning of the veil, et cetera. So you have a real pitch battle now between the French and the al-Qaeda branch in North Africa. Uh, which is not going to be helpful to the al-Qaeda folks. And potentially helpful in the, to the U.S. in terms of having the French as a more cooperative ally in the global right. war against terror or whatever the administration is calling it these days. Absolutely right. I think the, the French have always been good partners, have always been helpful, but to have the French being out front aggressively rhetorically is actually quite helpful, and it gives other countries like the Spanish some cover to perhaps do more uh, with their North African c counterparts. Okay, our third topic, Venezuela and <laughs> Colombia. The, the world doesn't get any simpler. Yeah. Uh, moving to the Western Hemisphere, tensions increasing between Venezuela and Colombia. Colombia, again, accusing Venezuela of supporting, harboring, helping the FARC uh, guerrillas, the terrorist group uh, that Colombia has been fighting for 20 plus years. Uh, also harboring the, the Basque terrorist group, uh, ETA. Uh, this is something the Spanish have alleged as well. Uh, and so this has raised tension. Uh, the Venezuelans have cut relations now with Colombia. Hugo Chavez has said that if the U.S. invades uh, Venezuela, because they view the United States being behind this, that uh, Venezuela will stop oil shipments. And so all of this has created a, a very tense atmosphere at a time when there's a transition of power coming in Colombia. Right. 
Okay, our last topic, digital diplomacy. What does that mean? Well, Secretary Clinton a few months ago gave a, an important internet speech talking about internet freedom being important to our values, to uh, U.S. foreign policy. But also she talked about the use of the internet and social media to actually uh, engage you know, on a people-to-people -people basis and with governments. And so you've seen uh, diplomatic trips with folks like Ashton Kusher to Russia, a recent diplomatic diplomacy trip to Syria, which proved somewhat controversial. Uh, but an attempt by the State Department and some young, really smart guys like Alec Ross and Jared Cohen uh, to use social media to advance U.S. interests. How's it working? I mean, are they connecting or are they just kind of emitting? Well, it's, it's more than messaging. What they're trying to do is use these tools as tools of diplomacy. Here are some examples. It, with the Haitian earthquake uh, problems, they used uh, social media and, and digital media to raise over $3 million very quickly. Uh, in Afghanistan, they've moved to mobile banking to avoid some of the corruption uh, issues, and so money is transferred quickly via mobile technology. In Mexico, they're exploring whether or not they can have uh, tip lines that can be anonymous so people can tip on the drug cartels in ways that uh, might make it more efficient for the government. And so they're trying to find active ways. One criticism is it's, it's a smattering, and it's, it's, not, it's not big enough. And one criticism I would have is uh, we haven't made a decision as to whether or not we're going to fuel the digital dissent that we see in places like Iran. Th that decision hasn't been fully made by this administration, and I think it's the one thing that's left to be answered by Secretary Clinton. Okay, good. Well, it'll be a topic for a future Flashpoint. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, John.